Hello and welcome cool. to Design Chat, the best live design discussion on the internet. I'm your host, Ryan McGovern. On Twitter, I'm at Hoobajoob and at Design Chat. Every week we get together with some of the coolest people from the design community so you guys can have a one-on-one -on -one experience. It's like a little design conference every single week. You guys meet to meet the most interesting people working in the design community today. So this week we are talking to Katie and Nathan, or Nate, I'm not sure, we haven't gotten that far yet, we're not that close, of 8 Hour Day, 8hourday.com. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming out. It's great to see you. Likewise. Hi. Thanks for having us. Totally. Um, I should mention, if you've noticed, our environment is a little different tonight. We are not broadcasting from Symbolic. Our wonderful tech guru, Andrew Tibbetts, and his wife have had their baby today. And uh, so we might be broadcasting from here next week also. We'll see how that goes. I understand the guy's a little busy. We'll see what happens. But congratulations to them on their newborn baby, which is all, it's the first design chat baby. That I just realized, wow, first design chat baby. That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, on Twitter, he's Andrew. That's awesome. Andrew, I want everybody to wish him uh, or, or congratulate him. Andrew T I uh, B B E T T S on Twitter. Say hi to him and say congrats to him and his wife Kim. So good for them. Um, all right, so let's kick it off. Let's let's talk about. Let's get into a little brief history about who you are uh, and what you do and why you do it. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so first. obviously, no, you Nate, Katie. <laughs> you first, you go, you go. <laughs> obviously, yeah, Nate and Katie. Um, let's see, yeah, what do we do? We are a husband and wife graphic design boutique in Minneapolis, though currently we are traveling around the U.S. for a year and remote working. Um, give you a little bit of our history. We've been operating as eight hour day for six years. Uh, coming up in February and before that I think we each had a whole range of, of different jobs in the design industry uh, let's see we both worked at Target as full-time freelancers in the interactive department there uh, it's kind of like the Wild West at that time a little bit we did a lot of uh, design but then we also did like flash development and there was no real like um, best practices going on yet <laughs> yet um, and then before that I worked at a big ad agency as the solo interactive designer just to kind of paint that portrait is about a 300 person agency and I was the only uh, interactive designer so I was there for about a year and I quickly got burnt out because uh, lots of late nights and uh, before that, I freelanced for about three years, just a bunch of different shops. And before that, uh, I traveled around the world uh, doing like uh, online social studies classes and like um, little flash activities for, for kids. That's uh, a long story, but uh, got to see some really cool places with that. And before that, it uh, was my first job out of college, which was like in 2000 uh, was about a 30 person interactive shop. Yeah, and before eight hour day I worked at Target as well. Um, that was the first job that we actually, no actually second job that we worked together. We worked in um, the, for the daily paper in college together. That was our very first job. We met in design school oh, that's awesome. and worked at the paper together and I, I was his boss. Um, yeah. Still am, um, but uh, then after <laughs> after school, I left. Um, uh, my first job um, was at a place called Red Design, and then after that, I worked at a place called Design Guys, um, and then I freelanced for a while and ended up at Target for a couple years, and then we started the business. So yeah, it's crazy that it's been six years. It doesn't really feel like that. Yeah, and Target was really instrumental in us breaking off. Um, you know, while we were freelancing there, we were able to save up a lot of money and, and you know, with the, mm -hmm. with this goal in mind. And then uh, they were actually our first client. So, um, you know, we did a lot of work for them for the first couple of years and slowly tapered off a little bit. Interesting to hear a lot, you know, the interesting details of, of, you know, what job led to what job and, and how, you know, you, it ladders up to what you guys are doing now. Um, the thing that... that really makes me interested is to find out is where uh, along that line 
did you decide? Was it three jobs in? Was it the last job prior that, you know, we have to break off, uh, you know, for whatever reason? What were those reasons that you guys decided to start your own shop? You know, I think for me, like when we, I, I don't know, I, know I, we kind of have the same feelings, I guess. But like, I feel like for me, like when I was going to school, um, going to college and, you know, Minneapolis has such a great design community and it's, and it's really full of these kind of small two person shops um, that are just, you know, I, I don't know if you know of like, you know, like Warner Design Works and Wink, you know, they're just some really great two person shops doing just amazing uh, work. And I just always really thought that was uh, really cool. I just, I always was like, that is where I kind of want to be. And I think that when we met, you know, I think it was always kind of in the back of our heads, like that would be the direction that we would kind of ultimately go with our business and the desire to stay mm -hmm. small and, and stay, you know, kind of agile and, and really be the ones doing the work, I think is what's so exciting about it, actually, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. And I had, you know, similar thoughts, like all through college, I, I kind of felt like I, I wanted to do my own thing, but I, I didn't really know what that meant. And then uh, as I started to do informational interviews, you know, while I was finishing college and then like actual interviewing, you know, I too went to all like the, my idols in, in Minneapolis, a lot of two person shops and seeing them in action I, I solidified it for me. I was like, yeah, definitely. I want to do that. But uh, I knew how to get, you know, a job, at least one job first. <laughs> um, you know, so I did that and then uh, got laid off in like 2001, like when the economy kind of crashed back then the, in the dot bomb yeah. time. And uh, um, and I just started picking up a lot of freelance. And, and again, that was perfect for me and it, it totally solidified it. And I knew that eventually I wanted to do that. And then, you know, fast forward many years later when we were at Target, uh, you know, we were working on a job for, um, it, what was it? It was like for Sean White was a Target sponsored athlete. So we, you know, built this website for him, almost like an, a, a blog type of thing where they were going to follow him around the X Games and, uh, and do like daily updates. And of course, since I, as well as a couple other people built the site, I was like, oh, I would love to go and be that person. But they're like, well, you're a freelancer. We can't hire you to do that. We can't send you on a trip. But uh, our boss knew we wanted to leave and start our own thing. And he's kind of like, well, if you were to do that, we could hire your agency then to do that. And, and so right. we're like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> One would uh, be able to make the quick jump, uh, given the name that you guys chose, um, that it might have some sort of relevance to agency world uh, versus managing you know, your own destiny and managing your own business. Is that, is that a legitimate jump to take there? Certainly, yeah. Um, it's you know it's kind of tongue in cheek for sure. Um, it's a whole bunch of things, but yeah, I would say first and foremost is managing our destiny and and kind of creating a design lifestyle where it's more organic than the typical nine to five mm -hmm. or in the agency world eight to ten uh, <laughs> and uh, weekends and weekends <laughs> and then nine to five on the weekends. Yes. Uh, um, you know, but but really, we also knew it would be a lot of hard work, so uh, it was very tongue-in-cheek in that manner. You know, we still run into people all the time, like at the post office, you know, or whatever, that, you know, the postal worker who's like, oh, it must be nice, like, oh. <laughs> oops, <laughs> like an a eight-hour workday, you guys are so lucky, and we're like, no, no, we're not really. I, wish, like I a, wish it was eight hours yeah, some days, that'd be nice. Still often like a 12-hour day, so... Well, I would imagine, you know, not only having your own shop, but running it with the person that, you know, you are in a relationship with, the, the boundaries between work and life and social probably often blur for you guys. Um, how, what's your philosophy on that? And, and where do you draw the line or do you draw the line? Um... Yeah, it's really it's really different, I think, than what maybe other you know people you know uh, you know they have a, a job in a bigger place or whatever. It's just a different 
like you were saying, organic kind of way of, of, of being, you know, and it is hard to turn it off sometimes. It's something that we struggle with, I think, a lot, actually, because, you know, we're, we both love design when we live together, so we're talking about design all the time, and we have a lot of friends that are designers, and, you know, we're going out and meeting mm -hmm. them, and, and we love what we do, so it is really hard um, sometimes to turn that off, even though we love it so much, you know, you can't, you can't you can't do that all the time, you know. So we do struggle with that, and it's it's something that we yeah. really have to pay attention to if it's starting to get out of control. <laughs> but yeah, it's often easier said than done, though. Too. I mean, it kind of depends where you're at. I think uh, you know, with projects at the time, you know, if, if you're not that busy or if you're working on projects that you're not that into, it's way easier to turn it off. But if for us, I feel like it's hard harder to turn it off if it's something we're really passionate about, um, you know. You're just like in your head the whole time and trying to solve it and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty good about not taking like the bad stuff home. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It, do your do your client relationships? Um, are your clients ever curious about how how the working relationship works? Um, and, and you know, do they do they do they inquire about it, or do you can you make an argument that says? You know, because we're husband, husband and wife, we communicate so much better than any, you know, segregated, siloed agency could ever work. Hmm. I feel like most of the time, it's that, that's very interesting. I feel like we've never really taken that approach um, when talking to clients. Like, if anything, I think more often than not, we're talking about the fact that, um, you know, that we're just two people and that when you do call us as a client, um, you're going to work with either me or him, and those are the only two people that are going to answer the phone, and those are the only two people that you'll ever talk to, and those are the two people doing the work. So you know that it's consistent, you know what I mean? It's not, mm -hmm. you know, you know, by seeing my site, you know that I'm the one doing the work, and that that's what, you know, that's the kind of quality or level that you're going to get instead of some intern or, um, you know, um, other designer doing it, you know, you, you what you get, what you see is what you get, I guess, you know. And I think we really like to have that personal um, uh, relationship with our clients too, and and become friends with them most of the time. You know what I mean? I think we really like that, and oftentimes choose yeah. clients kind of based on that relationship too. So yeah, and and also I would say that um, you know. I think, yeah, a lot of smaller shops probably achieve similar type things, even if they're not married or in a relationship. You know, you think of, like, some of like our idols that we were talking about earlier, like Sharon Warner or Richard and Scott of Wink out of Minneapolis. Like, you know, they're basically married. <laughs> even <laughs> though they're not. To each other, even though, you know, they each have their own separate families and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it's just the, I think, the being such a small, intimate shop, uh, it's just going to happen whether you're married or not. Right. Um, one of the things I want to remind the audience about right now is that uh, this, you know, in Design Chat, you can ask questions. We are going to start taking your questions very shortly. Mm -hmm. And to do so, you just click on the red button on the side that says ask a question. And it can happen in two ways. You can enter it in as text, and we will bring it up on the screen. And of course, you will get credit for that. Or if you've got a webcam, you can actually get on camera and sort of face to face ask a question and be part of the conversation. So please, please, please join the conversation, be part of the discussion, be proactive in that. Um, so we'll start doing that in, in just a few minutes. Um, I do want to ask you guys about, um, I want to get into your interactive work. Nate, you started to talk about your earlier days at an agency where you were the only uh, interactive guy out of like a 300 person group. And that's got to be a pretty daunting task. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that and how like how that translated to your knowledge base of like how you control projects now. Yeah, that's a good. Fantastic question. Um, yeah, so I was part of a, a really great design group actually within the agency. Um, There's probably about six of us and, and we had a great design director, Ed Bennett. Um, but everyone was print except for me. So it was kind of weird. Like, yeah. it was, st I don't know, I felt like it was still, even though it was like 2003 or 2004, it was still early on 
strangely enough, in like the interactive world, there was no like formal interactive department at this agency. You know, I, I, there kind of was. There was like a strategy guy. Um, so it was really like a bit of him. You know, I was part of this design team, and then I had an amazing project manager, and it was really. It came, really came down to me and the project manager, and and together, like we we're just able to handle it. We had a really good relationship, and um, definitely couldn't have done it without her. But I would say that it helped me in terms of my skills to for managing. But also, I was coming f straight from freelance before I took that on, so it also seemed pretty natural. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, given that, I mean, you could still say, even though, like, 2004, that's, that's an early time in intera internet and interactive time, you could still make the argument that 2010, um, you know, is still an early time. It seems like it's still a little bit wild, wild west. You yeah. never know exactly what's going to happen next month or a year from now. There's absolutely no way to predict the future. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit curious about how you guys handle that sort of work as a group, right? how you stay on you know learning trends and keeping up to date um, and the, the new coding techniques that come out and you know, sort of how that stays running I guess yeah I uh, think you don't know about Katie she's like a coding dynamo she's like <laughs> insane she's coding a website right now in her head uh, no just kidding uh, <laughs> you know like like back in the day, for sure. Like I think my first job, we were it was like right before I got laid off, and we were super slow. So I, uh, I just took it on, on myself to learn Flash and and create like a, a promo CD at the time. Like those little mini CDs were really cool with custom shapes, uh, yeah, I uh, the, the ones that would never fly on a laptop. <laughs> but uh, at the time, like the laptop had laptops had the tray that would like come out. So. Um, so I, I took it on myself to learn that, and then, you know, just almost like every job I had after that, it was like, oh, design this and build it, too. So um, it just kind of became out of necessity, and then working at Target, like we were saying, it was still very much the Wild West. There was no, there was a, um, a development team, but none of them worked in Flash, so, like, all the designers were doing the Flash development, and... You know, no standards at all. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, very ugly files. Um, but, you know, over the past three years, we've gotten completely out of development. Um, we realized that we really like design the most, and that's our strength. And now we hire it all out to people much smarter than us. And it's been amazing, so... But I think at that same time, I think we're just, we've always just really, I think, both been excited about, about technology and about the new stuff that's kind of coming out. And we always are, like, watching, you know, what's happening. And, and um, you know, I think that really excites us. And, and from, you know, a design perspective really excites us, too. So I think we're always kind of kind of watching and, and challenging ourselves in that way and trying to, trying to learn, even though it's... It, you know, it's hard to keep up with that, that stuff, you know, if you're not doing it, um, you know, kind of always looking. But, um, you know, I think we're always kind of trying and, and experimenting when we can. I was just having this conversation uh, last week, in fact, um, about I was, I was expressing a frustration in that I haven't had any time in the last year, really, to brush up on flash skills and coding and programming and I have no idea dangerous and so up a website essentially and I was so I'm like I'm frustrated <laughs> about it and, and at the same time I had this thought like there are kids coming out of school right now that um, have been learning programming since they were in grade school right it's not a new thing for them it's not something that's been difficult they've learned it since they were a child so they've absorbed it in a different way than we have now I'm scared of those kids I'm scared of the kids right now because they can do crap. There's no way I could do, it. and and I, there's no way I'm going to catch those guys. Um, so I'm a little bit curious about, you know, uh, you know how you sort of view uh, young designers coming out, and I'm sure you probably have interaction uh, w with young designers and get questions all the time just because how awesome your work is and what some of those conversations are like. I mean, I would say that. Um 
Yeah. Um, for the most part, like, there still is a pretty big gap, especially with the, the kids coming out of school between design and development. And I, I just feel like um, there's always going to be that gap. I feel like the cl- maybe not always depends what new technologies come out, but you know the closest that gap ever got to be was like in like 2000 to like 2003 with like Flash, where like I was saying, designers were were the ones coding Flash, and developers were still like, "Whoa, I'm not touching that. What the, what the hell is that?" Like uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, like most of the kids, most of the kids that we talk to are still really intimidated by coding. And, and interactive design even. Especially um, especially girls, and it kind of makes me angry sometimes, you know. Um, I keep going. No, I, I would say <laughs> we get a lot of kids coming in for informational interviews, you know, they're juniors or seniors or just graduated, and we usually have to give them a pep talk on like, you know, you should be doing some layouts of a website in Photoshop for this this brand that you have in your book. You don't have to code it. Don't, you know what I mean? Like that, they just like think that like, oh crap, like I, I'm not even going to design it because I have to code it then and I have no idea where to start. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I think it's just about starting somewhere. It's like, you know, start at the design, like start where you know and design a page because even that skill alone is good because designing a website is different than designing a print piece. They're just different rules and different boundaries and, and, and different ways you go about it. And then, you know, just take it like one step at a time. And if you decide to work with a developer, you're going to learn how to work with a developer. And if you decide to build it yourself, you're going to go through pulling out some hair, but, you know, ultimately, you know, learn how to to code a a piece. Or even if you go through kind of a templated site and learning how to, you know, work within a template first before you build a site from scratch. I mean, it's just like little steps along the way, I think, really kind of, helps them not be so freaked out by it all, you know, like, just, just try it, get into it, get a feel for it, you know. Kate, what do you say to the girls that you're so angry at, uh, for having not (laughs) wanting to learn how to code and get involved in that? I don't know, I just, I just want them to try, you know what I mean, because I see, like, some just amazing, um, girls that, that design so you know, just great stuff. And then, you know, when I bring up interactive, they're like, oh, no, I just do print. I'm like, you know, I got every job that I ever got because I knew a little bit about Flash, honest to God. And, and, and or, how even, to or how to design in Flash or how to design a website. Like, it wasn't even like I was hired at a place that was an interactive place. I was usually hired at a print shop that was like, ooh, like, you can do interactive or you can do Flash, like, you know, it just was a skill that put you, um, you know, kind of above the next person coming in the door. And I think it's really fun. It's a great way to, you know, there's a lot of opportunities there, you know, for for women and for girls and coders and, you know, whatever. And I feel like a lot of times, like for the students in particular, you know, we a lot of them turns out like don't even have like an online portfolio. So we'll try to like get them to start there like oh you know design one for yourself use like index Zibit or cargo or even wordpress or something and then try to get in there and modify the css and and you know make it look like you want it to look and at least get your feet wet that way um mm-hmm. or like i was saying before um design in photoshop like you know a supplement to something that's already in your book and then you know figure out how you're gonna build it I want to ask you guys about your one-year project or your year project, um, where I read on your blog that um, you guys have gotten rid of your shop and sold your condo, and you're going to spend 2010 and 2011, or just 2011, or you, I don't know when, but you're traveling, and you're you're saying uh, maybe you spend a month in this city, a month in that city, and we're going to work, and we're going to see the country. Um, the inspiration behind that, and how's it, how is it going so far? Yeah. I mean, the inspiration, I mean, it it started like two years ago. Um, Two years ago, we had an idea of, I mean, okay, the thing is, is like what right now, like what you're seeing, like that's, this is like our day to day. Like we're, we're just next to each other on laptops at a computer, you know, just 
working on day away and I think we are just we have always been really inspired by travel and always been um, inspired by just kind of getting out and seeing new people and new things so two years ago we actually um, in 2008 went and tried out remote working from San Francisco for a month in September and uh, we really liked it and um, so then we did it again last year in 2009 and worked um, from for a month from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. And um and I think this time around um you know we we had owned a, a condo in a in a fourplex in South Minneapolis and as much as we loved it we were just kind of ready to to move on and we weren't really ready for a house and we weren't really ready to start a family quite yet and we just didn't know what we wanted so we were we decided to hit the road, and, and, and I think we just really wanted some adventure and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, you know, I don't know, go crazy, I guess. But um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we rented out our studio and sold our condo and packed everything up into a Volkswagen uh, GTI with a skybox and mm -hmm. headed for Seattle, which was our first um city and then it was followed a month later by Portland and now we are in um, San Francisco so yeah it's been going really good we've been awesome. really had have been yeah a ton of fun meeting a lot of people that we know just from online and like Twitter friends so, so we've been meeting like people that we've never met in person and been, been able to like hang out with them and stuff so yeah yeah that's been really right. fantastic and here in San Francisco, we absolutely love San Francisco. Um, for a, a while before we decided on this trip, we had thought about moving here actually, but decided to kind of delay that and do this trip first, so. What are the biggest challenges that you didn't see coming that, you know, there's no way you could have predicted in going on the road and working? My biggest challenge was actually when I was in Seattle and Portland, I was, um, I think we ultimately found out that I was allergic to something there. Um, really? <laughs> eight years ago, yeah, eight years ago, we had actually got, yeah, we had gone there eight years ago as like a, um, one of our very first like vacations together. We went to Seattle for a week. And um, at that time, um, I, my ears like completely closed up and um, so much so that we ended up actually driving to Whistler uh, Mountain for to go see like the ski area and like go have dinner and by the time we got to the top like I couldn't even hear the waitress like take try to take my order like my ears was so I was so congested and um, I didn't really think too much of it before we left for Seattle this time <laughs> but I should have and um, so Seattle and Portland, obviously it didn't get any much better in Portland because it's still the Northwest, um, but they, it, it, I had a really rough time. I was really sick like for those two months. So I'm really excited to be in San Francisco and feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. yeah uh, there's no way you can. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, nothing. Yeah. Uh, it was really rough. and. Uh, but I think that's definitely behind us. Part of part of the therapy was we actually fled Portland early and uh, with plans to go to Reno over Thanksgiving because we thought that would be pretty hilarious. <laughs> and uh, but uh, there was a big snowstorm, so we didn't make it there. Instead, we we spent a week camped out in a hotel in Sacramento. But uh, definitely drier down there. Yeah. And uh, within two days, I felt better. It was insane. It was yeah, really weird. weird. So yeah, I'm never I the, the <laughs> Northwest does not like me at all. So I'm just seeing on this chat. Reno is so depressing. It absolutely <laughs> is. But we thought it would be a beautiful in a depressing way to spend Thanksgiving there and yeah. uh, enjoy some of the, the uh, casino buffets. But uh, you know, other than that, you know, I think um, <laughs> what we've learned is is we really, I think, gotten good at, at shopping around for uh, the places that we're staying. Uh, their vacation rentals usually like a furnished house or apartment that someone's not using, so they rent it out. Um, right. So really trying to, to find good places in good neighborhoods. But then all, like the, the trickiest part is usually you have no idea really what kind of work setup you might have. So uh, oftentimes when we get to those places, we do a lot of rearranging and, and 
and rearranging of their furniture and just trying to get a decent place to work. So, Have you picked areas, you know, that maybe one of your clients lives in and maybe you can have more face-to-face -face time with the client or do the clients even react to, oh, you're not going to be in one city anymore? Like, how am I going to get a hold of you? What, that kind of deal? I mean, it, um, I mean, probably the reason why that we kind of entertained this trip too, like, well, as Katie mentioned, the two other times we did um, Brooklyn and, and San Francisco a couple years ago, uh, it was a bit of a test to see how that would work. But then I would say even since then, I mean, more and more, most of our, our clients are not even based in the city where we're from, Minneapolis. And, and out of the ones that are in Minneapolis, um, you know, we rarely see them either. It's just kind of like everything, I would say 90% of what we do is just online now. And, um, but it's been kind of nice. Actually, we we're here in San Francisco and, and like a software company contacted us for a project and, uh, we got talking and it turns out they're like, uh, on the, the outskirts of San Francisco and they had no idea that we were here visiting. So it, like, we're actually going to go see them after the new year and kind of get oh, this awesome. project kicked off. So that was like a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're um, trying to reach out to, to people in each city too. It's a pretty well-known fact. I'm a, a total dig, uh, dot com nut. And I, I noticed that one of the projects that you guys worked on was the dig labs. I want to hear every little detail about how that project got started and what it was like working on it um, and, and how, you know, did you have any conversation with the guys at DIG or anything like that? Everything. I'm, I'm just going to get comfortable. I'm, seriously, I'm just going to please tell me all about it. <laughs> I wish there was a, a ton to tell about uh, uh, inner DIG scandals and whatnot, but, uh, um, <laughs> you know, it actually started roundabout uh two years ago when we were here in san francisco um through our friend uh dave schroeder who runs uh, a flash conference in minneapolis called flash belt um we we're on san francisco and he's like oh you have to meet my friends uh jeff stearns and and brandy hennel um they live up there they've got a chocolate lab like you guys do they're great people so uh, we ended up hooking up with them for a drink and uh yeah uh Jeff Stearns works at Google. He's a long-time developer. Uh, a lot of people have probably heard of him. Um, and then Brandy was a project manager at the Barbarian Group, which has a mm -hmm. few offices all over, I think, um, like San Francisco, New York, Boston, for sure, um, if not others. Uh, so we really got to know them pretty well, you know, went out with them a, a bunch of times and, you know, took the dogs to the dog park and became pretty good friends. Um, and then just kind of out of the blue, like a year later, if not even a, really about a, year, yeah, about a year later, Brandy called us and was like, I got a perfect job for you guys if you're into it. Um, we're really busy Very and we cool. need design help for this Dig Labs thing. Um, and they, they had like a wireframe to start out. Um, and they're really, at first, they're like, well, you know, we put a lot, they're really, uh, Barbarian Group is really good at like strategizing and kind of putting really smart and critical thinking into what these project projects should be. So they had already done a lot of that thinking and they're like, really, like, you can, let's start and, and go off of these wireframes and really just skin them. Um, so we did that and we got probably like three different designs in front of the, uh, like sent over to Barbarian Group and then they <clears throat> met with Dig in person. So we never actually got to talk one-on-one -on -one with, with uh, the people at Dig. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as that went on, um, it, it really kind of quickly realized that the project could be a lot more than, than kind of how it had started. And, and the people at Dig were like, blow our minds like do something really cool you know it was it was um they wanted to premiere at their five-year anniversary and um and get that you know have a big celebration where this was like playing so uh, we really were, were wide open you know we just kind of started to play with a lot of infographic type stuff and kind of came up with this like dial mechanism that was like a 
you know, kind of like a safe dial, it, though at the time it wasn't really meant to be that, but it kind of turned out that way mm -hmm. in a good way. And uh, and then it was really just us working one-on-one -on -one with the developer at the Barbarian Group, Ashley, who I think was out of Boston. And she was just amazing. You know, we sent her Photoshop files, you know, with very little direction on how it should animate, you know, just a couple brief phone calls uh, back and forth. And then all of a sudden she like whips out this crazy thing that's like, super dynamic and, and yeah, it was really beautiful. So, um, and it really went really smooth, you know, once the design was signed up, off on and then building out the rest yeah. of it and getting it animated. Um, Dig was super laid back to work with and they're just like, do it. Yeah, make it happen, so. That's awesome, that is awesome. Um, if you guys haven't <laughs> seen it, definitely go to eighthourday.com and look for their Dig Labs project. And then it connects to the Barbarian site uh, that then still has that running live, which is a really cool interaction. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start taking a couple questions here. Yeah. Um, I'm only seeing a couple guys, uh, so uh, audience, ask more questions. All right, first one comes tonight from Ben <laughs> Ramirez, who wants to know, how do you handle differences in each other's design tastes and opinions as, husband, as a husband and wife team? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a thumb wrestle, or do you guys win? <laughs> one person win? Um, there's a lot of um, heated back and forth, but it's it's all pretty funny because we we both know exactly what the other person's thinking. So it's really just kind of like sometimes being argumentative, argumentative for like argument's sake. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, but that's pretty rare, actually. I, I think when we do get a job in, it's usually quite clear kind of which one of us should handle it. Um, even though a lot of jobs where um, it could go either way, we'll both do concepts for. But, you know, I would say about 50% of the time, it's like, oh, yeah, that's totally illustration. I should go to Katie. Or, you know, that's more interactive. It should go to me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's usually more like on our own stuff, like our own branding or whatever that we get into fist fights over that. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, do it doesn't get violent at all. It doesn't get. You never just like, you know, f you, get out of the house. I'm not gonna deal with it anymore. You're so crazy. No, but I, it's like it's kind of funny like, because I think of, like. I, what the f is that? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think a lot of times, though, like when we do have like interns, and we've had a couple, a handful of interns in the past, it it does get rather difficult, I think, to um, to have them in the studio because I I think that we have our own way of talking to each other that maybe could sound, you know, harsh to someone else, like that does that's not in the relationship, but like yeah. you know, we're just like you know, like if he's working on something or you know. Yeah, they're not inside the circle, and yeah. it's like, you know, I can definitely come up to him and be like, oh, God, like, that that sucks. Like, and, like, he'd be like, come on, come on, like, come on, you know that sucks. Like, admit it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know, you know, fine, you know, start again, you know. So I think that we have a way of being, like, being honest with each other. Yeah. Aw, <laughs> that's so cute. That's a good one. Um, Amara VP wants to uh, know who plays bad cop with the cantankerous clients. Do you guys play <laughs> roles with the client? Good cop, bad cop. Um, uh, I'm probably the bad cop. Actually. You're probably yeah. <laughs> I typically break like like I'd say like you actually um maybe have more of a relationship with the client over like phone and and such typically like with projects, but. Um, if things get out of hand, I'm usually the one to bring the hammer, so... Yeah. yeah. She, she often uh, <laughs> offers to be... The Next question is coming from Dave Hagen, who wants to know, um, what's the status of your children's book, Eli No? Uh, how did that project come about? Is Eli home? Eli's your is dog, this yeah? Dave Hagen from Minneapolis? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is this Minneapolis Dave Hagen? Perhaps. I don't know. Possibly. Uh, um, let's see. Yes, uh, I... <laughs> he says yes. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> what up, Dave? Hey. Um, yeah, my book, um, it is, right now, it is at the publisher, and final files have been sent to the publisher, so it should be out this next fall, and um, so it's really exciting, and um, uh, let's see, uh, they, it came about because I had, um, we had a, a nephew and niece, uh, Parker and Kiki, and our dog Eli, of course, um, so anytime like Parker and Kiki would come over, um, you know, the dog would be running around being crazy like Eli can be, and you know, I'd have to say, Eli, no, Eli, no. And, of course, Parker thought this was just hilarious. So he'd run around after me saying, Eli, no, you know, out loud as well. So, Eli, no, Eli, no. And um, I just thought it would be a really cute um, book to do for him. I did it for his birthday. And, um, and um, yeah, and Eli is, um, Eli is here with us. Um, he's been traveling with us around the country. So he is, uh, he is sleeping right now on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. There was on the AIGA voice blog, um, just like a few days ago, there was a post, um, I'm forgetting who it was written by, but it was about um, uh, the website uh, Dribble, where designers and creatives can uh, share some of their work and work in progress and get feedback. And it was a whole, it was sort of a critique about why that's sort of bad for design. Um, and and why you shouldn't do it and what the dangers are and the interesting part came after it was submitted um, because there was a huge backlash in the comments and tons of people writing back and forth and I, I think I even saw a comment from Stephen Heller sort of explaining the, the position of um, voice itself and, and and sort of where they stand on the whole issue um, so I, I don't want to ask you guys really about the controversy and what you feel about that but just about um, the openness of the internet and the state of where we are and how so many the sort of um, new state of how easy it is to share ideas and work and, and what your experience has been with uh, doing that. I, you know, I, I think it's amazing. I mean, even like thinking about like the Eli book as, as a perfect example of that, like I, you know, I just did that book, um, you know, like I said, for my nephew. And I had a lot of fun doing it, and I, I did end up putting it out on Flickr um, because I, I really love Flickr. I've actually been able to meet a lot of people through F Flickr. And, um, you know, it, it was just out there. Blogs started to pick it up, um, and I actually ended up getting a, an email from a girl that was just writing me. She was from New York, and she was like, oh, hi. Like, I love your book. Like, where can I buy this book? I'm like, actually, you can't buy this book anywhere. It's not available. I don't have a publisher. And she writes back and she's like, actually, I, I know a publisher. Like, do you want me to put you in contact with him? And I said, yes. And, <laughs> and she did. And that was, actually, that was actually someone at Abrams. And that's who my public, I, I, I ultimately got the book published through. So it's, it's kind of amazing how just putting work out there and, and being accessible like that can, and can really come through. I mean, can really, and, and start connections and, and networks with people as well, like beyond just finding clients. I think we've just been able to meet some really amazing creatives um, and follow along what they're doing too and, and build a relationship that way. And, and so I think it's been really great that way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think sharing of, of everything is, it's really made things move fast in a great way, you know, it's like constantly turning over like what's cool and what's hot right now and it, it definitely makes mood boards easier because <laughs> it's so easy to just, you know, grab stuff out there, you're not sifting through books and things like that as much. Um, in terms of like uh, kind of like the process of a project and critiquing that, that I'm not, I'm not too sure what I think of, of that, you know, it's the internet can be a weird place in that in that regard sometimes in terms of uh, chat boards and, 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 and you know what people are saying about projects. It can a lot of times people can be kind of <laughs> and it's not necessarily always constructive and um, but you know I haven't participated in that side of it that much, but Speaking of dinky internet, uh, we're going to try to take a video call from someone, and because I don't have my tech guy, 
We cannot pre-screen this call to make sure that the caller's got a good internet connection and camera and all that. So we're just going to take it to see what happens and see uh, how dinky the internet okay. can be. So, all right. Amara VP. <laughs> Hello. You Hi. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, you can't hear me? Yeah. Question. Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Perfect. Uh, well, What's your name? Amara is my name. Um, my question is uh, to find out what online resources do you recommend for designers who want to learn to code? Um, that's something that I've kind of been tinkering with the past uh, 13 years where I have more of a design background, but I'm always expected to be able to take my designs online. So in terms of mobile development, uh, database backend programming, what do you recommend for someone who's primarily a design brain who needs to make that switch soon? For me, like back when I was doing it more, I would, you know, I would, I would just kind of dive in and, and I would try to find examples of like what visually I wanted to happen. And then I would just try to search forums and find the code to, that made that happen and then modify it for my needs. So, I mean, that's the best advice that I would uh, give to you. You know, I don't know what kind of programs they have online, but another, another place we go to a lot is um, lynda.com. Um, L Y N D A, and uh, they have a ton of resources that kind of just like walk you yeah. through step by step. And I'm sure there's like programming, um, uh, you know, yeah, there programs is. on there. And um, we, I mean, I just, I, I feel like we often go there just when we need to know, you know, something random, like you know, oh, we need to know how to do this in After Effects or you know, you know, whatever the case might be, or the sound editor. And it, and it's just great for like little things like that and, and I think I always feel like they're really they're like a great learning tool like my god like if I would have had that in college it would have been like amazing yeah and uh, I'm just seeing on the Twitter feeds here too uh, uh, Lifter Baron mentioning reverse engineering a site which is totally like you know what I would do when I was coding flash I would you know download someone's pre-built widgets or whatever to, you know chunk of animation or code and like just try go backwards and, and figure out how it works and how then I can modify for my needs. But, um, uh, and then also, uh, yeah, like Katie said, lynda.com is awesome, not only for development, but like, you know, like I've gone on there and I know Katie has too, and like, and like checked out like things for like Illustrator and, and you're just like, wow, like I had no idea that you could do that in Illustrator. Yeah, like, it's like amazing that you can still keep learning new like programs you use like every day, you know, it's just, it's kind of yeah. amazing. So, yeah. And lynda.com is really well done. And, um, I think it's like a, I think it's like a $25 membership for a month. Um, but you know, it's like they bring in, bring in the best people and they, they have a system totally dialed in. And yeah. It's just, it's top notch. We should get some money from them. I know. Lynda.com. Yeah, we should, we should get a, a promo from them. Totally. Um, we've got three more questions. Send us some um, check. We're almost near the end of our hour, seriously. And um, and then we're gonna t uh, turn the tables, and we're gonna have you guys ask a question of the audience. So we'll, let's bang through those questions, and then uh, keep this thing moving. Um, Salvatier wants to know what are your thoughts on crowdsourcing sites and crowdsourcing in general. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, we don't just we just don't do that. We, we, just, I mean, stay we just stay away. Stay away from that. I mean, it yeah. mostly we have a really hard time a lot of times with like RFPs and and that sort of crowdsourcing and contests. Like we just can't. We just usually don't have the time for it, and we usually just can't um, devote that much time to it because you, we just need to be on jobs that are paying. You know, like just we just need to be you know making money when you know with that time so yeah and i don't know if that makes sense but i'd say a lot of those people end up going with the cheapest anyways and that's not really what we're about so yeah um yeah i think we really like people <laughs> i think we really like to choose the clients that come to us for us specifically right fair enough uh ben amirez wants to know or ramirez rather uh, want any amazing insights for a husband and wife team trying to start a design shop like you guys? Uh, 
Uh, a really good bookkeeper and a really good tax person are very helpful for, you know, a good long time. We didn't have a bookkeeper and our tax person was a total bastard. <laughs> and then we finally got wise, got a good, uh, got a bookkeeper and got an amazing tax person. So yeah, that for sure. Um, I think like, I think else? from like a relationship standpoint, I think you just need to like really communicate with each other about the business and, 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 and really set, um, you know, set up who is doing what, you know, and, and really put people, you know, like, you know, we each have our own, uh, you know, skills that we rely on and we each have our own kind of tasks that we, that we do, um, you know, and that we're in charge of. And I think we really had to communicate too, like, you know, well, I really, you know, how we communicate about the work and how we go about our process. And, and that just didn't come overnight. I mean, that did take a while to, to find out what works for us. And I think we're always still really, you know, trying to, to keep that in check and, and make sure that we're not, you know, it's a, it's always positive and it's always kind of moving forward. And yeah. And, um, and this might sound cheesy, but like definitely like set goals, like, you know, it, you're probably already doing it without even realizing it for sure. Like I know we were for a long time before we like actually like wrote down some goals, but like I was trying to better um, yourselves and, and your shop and like think of like where you want your shop to be and like in the next year and the next two years, uh, you know, what kind of clients do you want? What kind of projects do you want to be working on? And, and always working towards that, even if it takes, you know, some, some, extracurricular time outside of the client work to, yeah. you know, whatever, like hone your skills or, or, you know, put out art prints or whatever your goals are. So. Yeah. Uh, last question from the audience tonight uh, from Mallory Box wants to know, what is your process like? How much sketching do you do beforehand? Uh, and you always work together. Um, you know, our process is, you know, we usually, um, you know, we usually get obviously the project and then we will both kind of, you know, talk about it and figure out what, you know, directions we, we think this will go in. Um, but then we actually create the concept separately. We'll, we'll usually work on our own concept each and then we will talk about it at that time after those two concepts are finished and, and then think about what the third will be. And the third is usually what we feel is missing in, in the other two. So, you know, whether if it's in the middle or if, uh, you know, maybe it's a way off to the, like the left or the right. And, um, you know, it's really kind of figuring that out so that we feel that the three have a really nice balance. And, um, and then, you know, it's usually just kind of working with the client and whoever's kind of concept is chosen is usually the person that, that ultimately takes kind of the, you know, project, uh, uh, manager lead. role yeah. in, in that in that job so um so yeah so that's kind of our process and i i say from sketching like we do do a lot of sketching a lot of thumbnailing um you know a lot of lists i'm like a huge like kind of just like list um you know kind of brainstorming list type person um yeah, first concepts yeah especially i like guess like she just said especially when it comes to concepts it's like yeah, yeah. like you know what was this brand, for example, trying to say, and you know, and then just kind of doing these spider webs of, of different directions off of that to, you know, convey that idea. Um, yeah, a lot of thumbnails. Um, you know, like for like web layouts, it's just a lot faster to quickly do a thumbnail and just like arrange the major elements, you know, to work out a grid and things like that, uh, and then bring it to the computer. Um, you know, sometimes I, like me in particular, I think I'm a little bit worse at it, but sometimes I get carried away. I'll just get like too excited and I just want to like jump on my computer and start working and like, I have to like stop myself and be like, no, yeah. you should sketch this first. It's going to be way faster, way better. So, yeah, but we rarely work on the same thing at the same time. Like we don't, we don't, yeah. we don't work on the same file. Typically we're, we're kind of too different. I think stylistically most of the time to do that. So, mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, well, great questions tonight from the audience members. Really awesome tonight. But now is a yeah, time where you. we reverse yeah, the you. table, reverse the roles. And you guys, <laughs> uh, Katie and Nathan, are going to ask 
a question of the audience and for the audience members you can answer in two ways you can either type it into the chat room and we'll see them fly by or if you think your answer is really awesome submit it as a question and we'll bring it up as as text on the screen um, so given all the time you guys had to think about it what's your question Katie and Nate yeah give us a quick moment here sure I can uh, entertain the audience <laughs> she just whispered I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Boom, 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 what inspires you most about the modern, about design and where it's at right now? It's very vague, but in particular, like, um, you know, online and sharing, sharing work, kind of going back to the, the dribble thing that we we're talking about. Cool, cool. Let's watch a chat room. The possibility, says Michael Esconis. Creative Commons says these hands are electric. Creative Commons. So, how have you guys <laughs> used Creative Commons? Hmm. Dead silence. It's this is what I wish comments. I could have yeah. video cameras to all the people who are watching right now and just have everybody on talking and madness <laughs> and craziness all at the same time. We'll get there eventually. Eva Crawford says, I'm excited about the analog design. photography revival. Interesting. There's definitely, we're definitely living in a time of analog and people wanting to get back to the pen and paper and drawing and then scanning stuff in. And, you know, we talk about this a lot. Uh, you know, yeah. Files that are popular, popular right now. Deviations. Or, yeah. yeah. I, I just yeah. overheard. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I just overheard someone at uh, uh, a coffee shop the other day, uh, Summits. Uh, Lifter Baron will know that one. Uh, yeah, it was uh, someone coming in to show the work that they wanted to, you know, display it in the gallery of the coffee shop, and the and the guy working was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't show digital." He's like, "Only analog." So oh, yeah. it's really interesting to hear. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I love the combination juxtaposition juxtaposition of elements, analog, hand drawn, used in a site, etc. Very cool. Cool. Well, yeah, that's a good call. From everyone, thank you uh, guys for doing that. And thank you to you, uh, Nate and Katie of 8hourday.com thank you. Uh, for coming on and spending an hour with the design community. That <laughs> was course. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks, everyone, for all the great questions. Have a happy holidays, everyone. Yes, happy holidays. Yeah, we planned happy on holiday. wearing, like, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we planned on wearing holiday sweaters, but we never really got around to finding them. <laughs> yeah, you guys chickened out. You didn't want to be seen on camera. Cool. Um, well, that's, that's no, no, I would take it there. We will be back, we will be back next week. Uh, we don't have a guest scheduled yet, but I promise, 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 we will get one. So same bat time, same bat channel. Um, and that is Design Chat. Thanks, guys. Good night. <laughs>